So after much discussion, we have come to the conclusion that we think it's been almost a year since we've not had the water maker. And I'm really, really, really hoping that this works. I think this will fix the problem. We first thought it was the membrane. We got the membrane delivered here in the USVIs. And unfortunately, that wasn't the issue. So now, Bo is re rebuilding the water pump. Water pump, high pressure pump. So fingers crossed that that is the issue. Only took about a day to rebuild. Have I ever told you how much I appreciate you and all your abilities? <laughs> yes, yes you have. Love you. Love you. <laughs> but it sounds way better than when I, before I rebuilt it, so. It sounds way better than when we used, than when we yeah, used it before. Well, look at, so these are the, the valves. There's like a noticeable, they're like punching through. That's supposed to be smooth. And you can see there's like a ridge on it. So these are really worn. I mean, it's old. It was yeah. given to us, so well, we're happy that it's lasted this long. And this guy is all corroded, falling apart. So that was probably running through the system itself, um, like little pieces of it, which isn't good. Show them the piece that cost the most out of all of the entire kit. This tool. It's the weep ring puller and it costs almost $600. <laughs> and I couldn't find it anywhere and nobody on island had it. Well, one marine, one wa water maker shop had it, but they wanted to charge me just as much to do it and they wouldn't rent it to me. So I figured I'd rather just buy it myself, do it myself, and then always have it on hand. But this guy costs 600 bucks. <laughs> I'm just thinking, $600, will we ever spend $600 on water? Ever? You don't have a water maker because of cost, you have it for convenience. Very true. Now we're gonna pressurize it and hope that it gets to 800 PSI. Before it was only getting to 600, so it wasn't enough to desalinate the, the water. And it was barely trickling out of the sample. Oh baby! Yay, my <laughs> efforts weren't for nothing. <laughs> that sounds so quiet compared to when oh, we used to run it. way better. And you know how to do it. Anybody else watching these and are out and about and need their water maker rebuilt? Anybody who has a Village Marine, <laughs> just hit me up. All right, let's make some water. So excited. <laughs> I can wash my hair. <laughs> I would like to take the time to say we are super grateful for this water maker. Anita and Tom gifted it to us a couple years ago, and it's actually an expensive piece of equipment. And for us to be able to just have to spend some to be able to rebuild it is huge. So thank you very much, Anita and Tom. We still love our water maker, which we have named, oh, Wallace. Here goes the real test. Does it taste like water or salt water? Ooh, that's fresh. That's a new filter too, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, yay! Water! Water! It's funny when you live where water is everywhere, but you can't actually drink the water. grateful that we we're really close to the pier. I guess we could have anchored a little bit closer, but our friend John is over there right now waiting for us. So we're going to go diving with him and hopefully he can show us around because he said he's done this dive lots. Having trouble there? <laughs> going to go do our dive, but first we got to load our paddle boards with these, all our equipment. So this will be interesting because we didn't want to have to deal with that guy <laughs> so we've been just using the paddle boards yeah let's be honest we've just been lazy but with that laziness we've actually not been lazy because we're getting exercise that's true <laughs> it is a lot more work to be paddling around Okay, they need to be wet anyways. <laughs> For 
this dive uh, is uh, Frederickstead Pier in St. Croix, USVI. We're gonna jump in right here and we could look along this wall in the shallows. There's usually little things to see, maybe, no guarantee, frogfish. Seahorse, fish. seahorse, 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 seahorse. Seahorse is what we're praying for. Yes. So go as slow as you want. Uh, we won't get much deeper than like 35 feet. So yeah. we don't, we have, you know, enough time to look around, meander around. But look at the columns, the columns that are going up and down. Those are like a natural habitat because this pier has been here since 89, late 80s. So the columns are where it's at. Um, they see frogfish here, batfish, flying gnards, uh, seahorses, seahorses, turtles, tarpons, barracuda, sergeant majors, maybe lionfish. And that's where I brought my. Ah, okay. nice. Maybe some lionfish to eat. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, like I said, when we get to half tank, let's yeah. tell each other, wiggle each other. I have a. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Everyone's we attention. One of those. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we'll turn around and we're going to exit on the other side. We'll follow you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We just went through a solid 90? 96 <laughs> minutes. 96 minute dive. Mind you, we did not see any seahorses, but there is tonight. We are doing our first night dive. <laughs> I'm a little, not scared, but apprehensive. I'm also very tired and it's really hard to hold this camera. It's so heavy. But we just paddleboard back with all of our equipment, plus these guys. Two tanks. Why? Because we're crazy. <laughs> we did see that mantis shrimp. Which is supposed to be really rare. And not only did we see it, we saw it attacking an arrow crab. Is that what he had in yes. his? Yes. Oh my gosh. He was eating an arrow crab. I thought he was attacking something. I didn't realize what it was. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to see that footage. <laughs> 
Wow. Oh man, now we need to get some food in our bellies and maybe take a nap. It's gonna be super interesting to see what it looks like between night and day. We've heard that the octopus are really active. Can you hold this? <laughs> so heavy. And we've heard that the seahorses hang out at the sand level. So eyes peeled tonight, gonna be really excited to see something. I'm trying different. to pull up the log to see what, I think the max depth we did was like maybe 30 feet. Maybe, maybe. we didn't go very far. It's yeah. not a, a big dive. We could actually free dove it for sure. <sighs> Nap time. All right, food. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, <laughs> the anchovies blew up all over me. They, they actually don't smell that bad. They don't smell that bad. <laughs> Well, these shorts are going to smell bad because it's oil. Well, you're going to swim in them later, so no big yeah, deal. Yeah, it's true. Now to clean up this mess. So the other day when we made our Caesar salad, or mentioned that we make our own Caesar salad dressing, a lot of you guys were asking what the recipe is. We're making that for dinner, lunch, I don't know. Liner? Liner. Super easy. Mayonnaise. <laughs> you take that while I go download all of the footage yes. that we just took. About a cup of mayonnaise, anchovy, two taste, maybe one or two strips. We'll do two, just to give it an extra bit of flavor. Not bad. Tastes like fish. <laughs> what it else? Is a fish. Mustard? Mustard and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Got to get the Lee and Pepperins. Perkins? Perkins. Purins. Purins? Really? Purins. I always thought it was Perkins. Lee and Purins. And then a little bit of Dijon. I do probably about a tablespoon of the Worcester and I'd say a tablespoon of the Dijon. And then you need Parmesan. That's like, that's oh, the yeah, key. The, that's Parma the, the Parmesan like helps balance out the anchoviness. You can get the non <laughs> the non fake stuff, I guess. And I think it's about a cup of that stuff, a cup of the parmesan. You so, just... here's the reason we have a really hard time trying to create a cookbook cuz this guy never uses measurements. So, that's the hardest thing that we've come across making a cookbook. So, I have to force him into actually giving me measurements. I have somewhat of an idea. If you guys don't have one of these immersion blenders, highly recommend it, especially if you're living on a boat. Super quick, super simple. We use it for a lot of things. I'm so nervous. You're nervous? Yes. Uh, I think it'll be fine. It's just gonna be dark. <laughs> That's the nerve wracking part. What? It's not like there's sharks or anything. So I think we're just gonna surface swim over to the pier. Why is it all tangled up? Lovey, what'd you do? I didn't do anything. We'll just surface swim over, do our little dive, and then... Our little dive? It's gonna be a fantastic, amazing, seahorse, octopus filled, amazing dive. Right? Yes, amazing dive. We're gonna do our amazing dive. This. Oh wait, no, it's not the amazing dive. It's not? What is no. it? No. Epic? Oh, epic dive, that's right. You are epic, epic. dive. <laughs> so we'll resurface once we're done with our dive, find out where Sosha is, set our compasses, dive back down, and then just swim on the bottom. That way we can avoid getting hit by all this busy traffic. Which are, there's nothing. Yeah, all the dive boats are in. It's not that busy, but better Play it safe sorry. and sorry. And we might see something on the way. It's about that time. There's a guy playing trumpet on the pier. The wind is super calm. So it's, it's about... It's so dark! <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty dark. It's about 8 o'clock. I don't think we're going to get better conditions than this. Wish us luck.
was that fish called? A grenard? I don't know what's Scorpion. Was. Oh. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. We are exhausted. exhausted. <laughs> we didn't get done with the dive. We got out of the water at 11.15 last night. <sighs> yeah. It was a, what, 70 minute? We were in the water for, let me check. 76 minutes. <laughs> we, I, I don't know, that had to be the easiest night dive we're probably ever gonna have. I have to say my favorite thing was as we were swimming over from Sersha to the pier, Bo says, look in the water. I'm like, why, what's wrong with, what, what, why should I look in the water? She thought did, it was a shark. We didn't have any lights on, so we were just swimming across. And uh, it was bright enough to see if anything was coming to us, so we were we felt safe. But I looked down, and I'm moving my arms, and just all the bioluminescence was surrounding me. It was magical. Epic. Epic. <laughs> I got my epic. I mean, it was just... Well, bioluminescence, if you guys don't know, it's just kind of like fireflies of the ocean they just have this chemical reaction in their bodies and it's just the moment you move them it's just so cool i felt like i was swimming in the stars unfortunately i couldn't get it on film though i tried <laughs> the water was actually pretty warm um it was warm for me because i had a half suit on and my full wet suit on so i was happy 28 degrees celsius whatever that converts into fahrenheit but I mean, you even said you got cold towards the yeah, end. Yeah, I got cold yeah. towards the end. I'm glad I had a full yeah. wetsuit on. Unfortunately, we did not see any seahorses or octos, but hey, there's plenty of other spots that we're gonna go and do night dives and such. We saw so many cool things though. It was, I mean, night and day difference, really. I and mean, all the fish were gone. <laughs> all the fish were gone. They were all sleeping. It was funny to see them sleeping, wasn't it? Like, yeah, there. like you, you kind of just, Stroll up on them and shine the light on them, and you know, yeah. they're like, "Hey, what's going on?" All the needlefish were just hanging out and just in the coral and just the flute, the flute, trumpet, trumpet, trumpet fish. Trumpet yes, fish. a lot of arrow, arrow shrimp. Yep. Turtles. And then we did see a huge squid. I'd yeah. never seen. I almost thought it was a cuttlefish because it was so big, right. but it was definitely a squid. He was after really looking cool. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Really bright and vibrant. A lot of lobster towards the end in the rocks. They I, were I out and about. I cannot tell you how many times this one said, I wish I had my, my gear with me. <laughs> we would have lobster right now. Yeah. Right before I jumped in the water, my stomach was kind of doing a little bit of nodding. But once we got in, it was just almost natural. I wasn't really afraid of anything. There's not a lot of life fish-wise over here, so I don't think I was really worried about that for... The tarpon. Ugh. They are pretty active at night. Yeah, typically during the day, they're just... Yeah, they just kind of hover during the day, but at night they're like striking little tiny fish yeah. and darting all around. And they're so scary because you just get a little bit of their flash shadow, and you're like, yeah. wait, what is that? But we were looking so hard for seahorses and I was looking really hard for octopus, but I, nothing, so. Yeah. We just don't know what to look for yet. Yeah. We haven't seen a seahorse underwater yet, so. I know. I'm well, so I think excited. that's why it makes it harder. Yeah. Because we true. don't know what to look for. All day during the day, we're looking on the columns, couldn't see them, and then someone told us to look in the, the sand, so we were looking in the sand all, but the cool thing is, is by looking for something like that, you're finding- Other things. Other yeah. things. When we got certified in Stacia, uh, Golden Rock Dive Center, thanks guys, gave us these guys, little log books. So we've been filling them out with all of our dives and I think I'm gonna start doing an electronic one. We might put it up into our Patreon page just so we have kind of a, our own little electronic living log. Yeah. log. Cause it also holds us accountable to fill them out because there's been a couple days that we have to go back and do them. But I think adding like pictures to it would be fun. Yeah. To see what we saw, yeah. That, oh, that's a good idea. And we need the books, we need, the books that show us everything that is because we saw so many anemones and on the way back we saw a really cool i don't know what it was it was just a oh what those yeah it, it was an anemone on the outside 
but then it had a it almost a like an, ring. an eye. Yeah, oh, it was so right? cool. Yeah, it was so cool. And then we saw a bunch of stuff in the sand, like little hermit crabs and crabs in general. Oh, like yeah, you don't see crabs, crabs walking around during the day. Yeah. And that one guy with the two eyes, yeah. he was cool. There was one guy who had no arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a really cool... Oh, cool. even the um, conch. Oh yeah, you never see the conch. Like, you have to turn them over to actually look at them. They're always hiding during yeah. the day, but at night, that guy was, he was eating. Yeah, he was, he was out, yeah. yeah, he was cool. Oh yeah, and we saw those, where they like starfish, the little strong... Oh, we saw different kinds of yeah. them too. Brittle, brittle fish, I think. Brittle fish, yeah. Or brittle stars. We saw black ones oh. and then like tan ones. I actually saw a tan one scooting off. He oh, was yeah. afraid of the light. He was moving pretty quick. And then we saw lionfish, but they were a lot darker than during the daylight. So they must change colors, maybe to hide better. I don't know. Oh. Yep, they are brittle stars, also known as basket stars. They have five arms, but some have six. This is cool. While sea stars use their tube feet to move slowly, the brittle stars use their highly flexible arms, highly flexible spiny arms instead. Oh, we saw several sandfish. Sand, sand divers. divers. Yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah, I was seeing all of them because they hide in the sand, obviously from their name. And and I was looking for the seahorses. <laughs> but for the first night dive, we had a great dive. Mm -hmm. It's going to encourage us to do more yeah, night dives. For sure. Wanna make it, wanna <laughs> make it. Like my dance moves? Yes. You make her <laughs> dance. Like your toilet paper sack. Do what you gotta do. You gotta keep the TP secure. And sun in your face. 